Welcome to Theater Corner. I'm your host, Michael Taylor. Theater Corner was created as an ongoing effort to promote more diverse interest and involvement in the theater scene. Barry Edelstein, the Erna Fincy Viterbi Artistic Director, is a stage director, producer, author, and educator. Widely recognized as one of the leading American authorities on the works of Shakespeare, he's directed nearly half the Bard's plays. As director of the Shakespeare Initiative at the Public Theater, Edelstein oversaw all the company's Shakespearean productions, as well as his extensive educational, community outreach, and artist training programs. Edelstein has taught Shakespearean acting at the Juilliard School, NYU's graduate acting program, and the University of Southern California. His book, Thinking Shakespeare, called by the New York Magazine a must read for actors, was published in 2007 and is now the standard text on American Shakespearean acting. He is also the author of Bardisms, Shakespeare for All Occasions. So, silence your cell phones, folks. You're about to enter Theater Corner. Here we are with uh, Barry Edelstein, the Erna Fincy Viterbi Artistic Director of the Old Globe Theater in San Diego, California. You are so welcome to be here, Barry. So happy to have you. Happy to be in Theater Corner. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I'm so thrilled about this because we are not only uh, some way, we're colleagues here we at, the, at the Globe, but uh, particularly uh, I regard you as a, as a very dear friend. Me too, and, Michael. And so I was. I was doing emotional backflips when you <laughs> agreed to come here to Theater Corner. I really appreciate you. So I think right off the bat, we gotta, we gotta talk about uh, this play that you're, you're doing right now, which is Hamlet. And right. this, is a, this is a particularly special uh, production of yours. Yeah, uh, you know, it's, um, in its run, it's, it's extremely successful, I'm really thrilled to say. It's in our wonderful uh, outdoor Lowell Davies Festival Theater, mm -hmm. and it's been running for a big chunk of the summer, and people seem to really respond to it and like it, and I'm just thrilled about that. Right, right, and it's, I mean, it, it's, it's incredible reviews. It's really quite uh, an amazing accomplishment. And you did a little something different with the cast. Yeah, uh, well, you know, it's uh, my first Hamlet. I've been around the play a lot. You know, I've produced the play, I've dramaturged the play, I've taught the play, I've mm -hmm. written about the play, but I've never directed the play. Right. And, uh, you know, it's intimidating because it's this, you know, the greatest play ever written right. and uh, kind of the Mount Everest of, of the theater world, right? So, you know, you have to prepare and get ready to go. Uh, and uh, it's been tremendously moving and powerful and, and, and a wonderful experience in my life to do it because the collaborators that I've been able to gather, the designers and in particular the cast, have been uh, so great. And the cast is led by a young actor named Grantham Coleman, young African-American yes. actor. Uh, the company has 20 actors in it, and 11 of them are uh, artists of color, wow. which we're all really proud of here. Right. Uh, and, um, and it's uh, really exciting and interesting to see this very American community of actors mm. uh, uh, of all different kinds, you know, people of every kind of different uh, ethnic background up there, all coming together around these greatest words ever written, and it's been just an honor to be with them and figure it out. Wow. So this may have had a, a little bit of a personal uh, uh, flavor to it, this, this particular yeah. play, and in the time that you're doing it. Yeah, well, you know, my dad passed away a little over a year ago now, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I was obviously there with him at the end, right. and um, the play just roared into my head, mm. you know, just roared into my head, yeah. and, uh, and lines, fragments, images, scenes, and, you know, it's... Um, the great piece of literature about what happens to a son when his father dies, mm. you know, that's, right. that's the story. The young prince and his father, the king, dies and the son loses all bearings and then finds out what actually happened. That's a crucial distinction one should draw. <laughs> my, my father's brother did not kill him, <laughs> you know. Okay. Not, that's <laughs> not what happened, you know. <laughs> right. uh, so it's not exactly <laughs> parallel. Okay. But, uh, but n nonetheless, you know, there's all this language about nature's common theme is death of fathers mm. and, uh, and 
and there's this gorgeous speech at the end about uh, preparing for the inevitable, you know, let be, if it be not to come, it will be now, all this amazing stuff. And these lines were literally bouncing around in my head kind of ferociously, you know, and I thought, well, that's telling me something. Right. And, uh, you know, when your dad dies, uh, no matter how old, I mean, I'm a you know, middle-aged man and, uh, and still, um, it, it was just so uh, completely unmooring, you know, it just sent me into a, the sort of tailspin for, for a long, long time. I, I still feel very, very grief-stricken about it, right. you know, and I thought, well, the fact that this play is so present in my head and the fact that I'm in the extremely privileged position of running a great American theater that is one of the great Shakespeare producers in the country, I should finally do it. Right. And so I put together this production of the play that is sort of really personal and that really has a lot to do with Hamlet and his relationship with his father. Um, in a, a, every production of Hamlet, of course, is built on that, but there's something about this production, I actually watched some of it last night, that, that, that I, I really see in it me trying to grapple with mm. these feelings of loss. Right. I mean, I, when I sat there in the audience, uh, knowing you and, and understanding that, uh, I, I, I see the, 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 the technical effort that went into it on the stage, obviously, but I could sense the, there was some extra heart that, that went mm. into it, and it, and it just made the, the play even more phenomenal. I appreciate I that. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you saw that. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's a scary thing because, you know, uh, I, I'm putting on a Hamlet that has to appeal to an awful lot of people, right? 600-something mm. seats, right. you know? Um, tens of thousands of people will see this thing over the course of its run. And uh, I, one, I worried. I thought, well, if I make this too much about my own experience, will it, will it speak universally to everybody who's coming in? And of course, that's the thing about art. The more specific it is, mm -hmm. the more universal it is. And the best way to fail in art is to try and please everybody, right, you know? Right, then right. it's gonna just be this sort of diffuse, uninteresting nothing, Good you know? Point. But by trying to make it as completely specific as I could to where I was at that moment, um, it kind of resonated with people, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the other interesting thing about Hamlet is, you know, it, it's, it's uh, going through a vogue right now. There was a major production in New York just earlier this summer. There's about to be a major production in San Francisco. There have been three major Hamlets in London in the past something like 16 months. Uh -huh. And these Shakespeare plays sort of cycle yeah. through. A few years ago it was King Lear. A few years before that it was The Winter's Tale. Mm -hmm. You know, these plays kind of come and stay there for a little while. Then they go away. Hamlet seems to be having its moment. And when you think about it that way, what's liberating for a director is you go, well, good, this doesn't have to be definitive. You know, this is not going to be the last Hamlet ever done. Right. So I will gather this group of people here in San Diego with this group of artists and this young man playing Hamlet, and we'll do our Hamlet, infused with my own personal feelings and his, mm. and the guy playing the ghost and the Certainly. woman playing Gertrude, right? And it'll be what it is for right now. And then there'll be another group of people that are going to do their Hamlet a couple of months from now, you know? I've seen the play, this is my 23rd time seeing a production of the play, you know? <laughs> 23 productions of Hamlet wow. in my life, you know? <laughs> and you think, well, it, it ends the same way every time. He's always dead, yeah, you carnage. know? It just, yeah, <laughs> right. you know, the plan, the king's plan doesn't work, Certainly. you know? Yeah. Uh, why go see it again, right? Because mm. it's not gonna be different, the outcome is not gonna be different, and the reason is you wanna see what this particular group of artists is going to do. Right. And that gave me a kind of freedom to say, well, yeah, I do want to make it about my dad and, and his passing because it's going to be this production for right now. And the next group of people are going to do it about their whole thing. Mm -hmm. And that's the joy and wonder of coming back to Shakespeare again and again because it will always reveal some reflection of the individual artists who are working on it at the time. Okay. The Globe. Yeah. What what are you what are you doing with the globe? It's, uh, well, what's know, what's happening there? I mean, it's a, it's quite a bit. It's but, an uh, amazing place, you know. I mean, you know, you're yes. on the you're on the board of the globe where you make an enormous contribution, and Thank so you. you know a lot about it. It's one of the country's largest theaters. I think at the moment, by budget, we're the fifth or maybe sixth largest theater in the country, which Incredible. is just amazing, right? Yeah. Three stages, fifteen shows a year, and of course, the the amazing thing about it is, even if you saw all fifteen of the shows that we do in a year, you're only seeing part of what we do. 
because we train artists. We have an, we have an actor training program at the University of San Diego. Right. And we have this gigantic program of arts engagement which takes the work out into the community in all these different ways. We send productions out, we do writing workshops, we do job skills workshops, we do life skills thing, we bring people here, we go to them. So it is this enormous sort of full service institution that is touching a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. And to me, we're at this extraordinary moment in the American theater, right? As we speak right now, something like 20 American theaters are going through leadership That's transitions, correct. right? Yes. I don't remember ever, and I've been in the American theater professionally for almost 30 years, there's never been a moment where that's the case. Wow. There is this gigantic upheaval. It has the feeling of a generational change. It has the feeling of a basic kind of paradigm shift. You know, I don't mm. know what this group of 20 theaters are going to turn into by the time they complete their leadership transition. So it's a moment when I think the entire movement is going back to basics and asking itself, well, what are we? What are we supposed to be? Mm. And absolutely, that's the case at the Globe. You, you've heard me talk about this yes. to, our, to our board and to various uh, gatherings in, in, in public. You know, we're, we're a 501c3 not-for-profit. That's, that's what we are. Um, and part of the 501c3 makes it possible for an institution like this to work because there are tax benefits that come with that. Mm -hmm. We're tax exempt, right? Unlike a commercial theater company that has to pay taxes on its operations, we don't because we're a 501c3. In exchange for that tax benefit, we are obliged to provide a public good. That's what the language in the 501c3 mm -hmm. talks about, providing a public good. So every day at the Globe, we're asking ourselves, well, what does that mean? H how do you make theater into a public good? What is that? Now, you know, we do a production of Guys and Dolls, and people stand up and cheer when the guy sings, sit down, you rock in the boat, and they feel happy. <laughs> That's a public good. Certainly. N no doubt, you know? Um, doing a really wonderful, clear production of Hamlet that uh, f young people and even adults who've never seen the play before can come to and begin a relationship with Shakespeare, that's absolutely a public good. Mm -hmm. But there are other, there are other things uh, uh, about enfranchising disenfranchised populations into an institution in San Diego, right? right? The Old Globe, 82 years old, is one of the flagship institutions of San Diego. You can't imagine San Diego without the Old Globe, just as you can't imagine San Diego without the San Diego Zoo, central right. to the place's identity. But so many people in our community don't have contact with the globe mm -hmm. for various reasons, because it's too expensive to get here, because physically you've got to have a car and drive to Balboa Park, mm -hmm. or because culturally the place may feel like it's somehow not for them. Right. So in order to be a public good, we have to respond to them, not just to the folks who can afford our tickets. Right? right? We're sitting in the middle of Balboa Park. It's one of the great urban parks in the United States. We receive public funding. There's a, there's a publicness to our institution that we have to honor by finding ways to make the theater matter to all these folks out there who don't even know what beauty the theater can mm. deliver to their lives. Mm. So that's what we're thinking about. We're trying to not only do excellent art on our stages, that is bringing in new actors, you know, giving an opportunity to a young African-American actor to play Hamlet, right. right? Opportunities that sadly don't come all that frequently mm -hmm. to African-American artists, right? Guys and Dolls, right? Sky Masterson and Nathan Detroit were played by black actors, right? You don't really see that typically. <laughs> no. So that's an extraordinary opportunity for the Globe and we're really taking it seriously. But that's only part of it. We've also got to get out of here into neighborhoods, right. talk to people, find out what they want. We're doing an enormous amount with the homeless, with seniors, refugees, with mm. incarcerated populations, with, with the military. And you know, here in San Diego, gigantic part of our city is the military, both active duty, retired, reserve, all, all sorts of stuff, right? So we're figuring out ways to deal with the military in an interesting kind of way. And it's fun and, and wonderful. And I feel like the future of the nonprofit movement in the United States is going to be determined by how well these institutions can figure out themselves as a provider of public good. That's exactly right. So we're gonna break right here and we'll come back with the conversation with Barry Edelstein.